Hi guys, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to another Mars launch. Yes, that's right, summer 2020. It's the year of sending things off to Mars because of course we are in a Mars transfer window currently, which means that we are, you know, there's only a Mars transfer window every 26 months. So uh, when things don't launch that are supposed to launch, like ESA's uh, Exo Mars rover that was supposed to land this year or take off this year, this next opportunity doesn't open until August 2022. So this is the summer where we were originally supposed to have four missions to Mars. We're down to three. But tonight, China is giving their first attempt. I mean, they've had an attempt before, and it was not successful, unfortunately. Um, but this is their first attempt, and or second attempt, and they're going hard. They're going all out on Mars, and it's very, very impressive. They went from uh, just a, a flyby or maybe an orbital mission, I don't remember what it was, but just a, an orbiter, to an orbiter, a lander, and a rover, all in one shot, five tons to the surface, five tons sent off to Mars, which I think will be the heaviest payload ever sent towards Mars. Let's get into this here, and just a friendly up note reminder here, guys. Um, this channel, my my team here, our community, we are Team Space. We are here to cheer on everyone going and exploring the cosmos, generating scientific value, and that are working hard on engineering, and they're working hard on science, and that they're just out there expanding our place amongst the cosmos. So we're here to cheer on everybody. So please, reminder, friendly reminder in the in the. In the community, I, I, our Discord, we're, 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 we're all in already. But uh, YouTube especially, guys, just, just keep in mind that there's people that have worked really hard in this program. So let's keep politics out of everything. Uh, it's exciting to see everyone striving to get into space. And in the end of the day, it makes all of us a, a more advanced species and really pushes, us, pushes the bar. All ships rise with the tide. We are just here to help cheer on people that are exploring space. And this is a big one here tonight, guys. This is a big one. So let's get into this here. If you guys ever have any questions about upcoming missions... Oh, by the way, I forgot to do this. Let's see if it actually works. I forgot to... <laughs> I forgot to do the thing that I do that I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not working. Okay, here we go. If you ever need to know anything about upcoming missions to anywhere, go to everydayastronaut.com. You can click on pre-launch previews. These are just, this is a website where whenever you have questions about your, you might hear, a, you know, you might see something in, on Twitter or in the news about an upcoming rocket launch. You just want to know What's it going to do? You know, where's it going? Who's doing it? Why? What? Blah, 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 blah. We have you covered here at EverydayAstronaut.com. Um, our team of, of writers is just really on top of the stuff. Tonight's mission is the Tianwen one. And again, another formal apology. I'm going to probably um, not pronounce things the best in the world. Um, I So I, I apologize right now to any foreign or <laughs> native uh, speaker if I am just absolutely slaughtering the the pronunciate the pronunciationins of all of this stuff, but it's the Tianwen one mission to Mars, and uh, yeah, for some reason my countdown clock whole thing isn't quite working as planned. Uh, I apologize about that, but we should have a little thing here. Let me see if I can't get the. Um, let's see, dude. Let me try this. It may have changed names ever so slightly. There it is. Thank you, Andrew, for. For doing that, I had for some reason a copy version of it. Then don't ask me. Okay, so this is scheduled to take off here. Uh, there is a launch window here, and I think our countdown clock is relatively accurate. We're not even quite sure 
if uh, we're not even quite sure if the launch stream that I'm pulling up is going to be a launch stream because I've never covered a launch from China before. And this is kind of my biggest fear in life. I am facing my biggest fears because it's 2020 and it's time to start covering everybody whenever I can and as often as possible. So this is supposed to take off the, the launch window is from 4 to 7 UTC, which is um, about what is that like midnight Eastern till three Eastern or something or four, three Eastern. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but yeah, the, as you can tell right now, it looks like we are an hour and five minutes according to our, our data. I think that's, uh, I think that's good. So hopefully we'll, we're probably gonna have to use our countdown clock to know whether or not they're actually launching in an hour and five minutes, but Mission name, this is Tianwen, Tianwen Wen, the first Chinese mission to land on Mars. So it's not to say the first mission to Mars, because again, they had an attempt several years ago, um, but this is the first attempt to land. And if it's successful, even just getting into orbit, that'll be their first successful mission to Mars, period. Landing on Mars would be another huge uh, check on the, the list. There's very few missions that have successfully landed on Mars and been operational. Very short list. We can actually go through that here in a little bit. It's, Honestly, surprisingly short. The launch provider, the rocket company that is launching this, is the China Aerospace Science and Technology Cooperation, or CASC. The customer is the China National Space Administration, CNSA. This is this is China's version of NASA, basically, or ESA, or ISRO. This is their um, state government-funded space program. So this is a this is a flagship mission for the Chinese space launch uh for this chinese national space administration so this is this is a big one this is a very big one the rocket launching this is the long march 5 which we'll get into i, I gotta explain that a little bit here it's a very capable rocket actually it's almost as capable very similar capabilities to a two booster return to launch site landing falcon heavy it's a very capable rocket it's a heavy lift launch vehicle um and there's a lot to find uh here so Yep, so that's the Long March 5. The launch location is technically LC-101 at Wencheng Satellite Launch Center in China. Now, for those of you confused, China does have a, um, a bad habit, uh, a history, and still a current sometimes launching overpopulated areas from mainland China. And unfortunately, booster, boosters will occasionally uh, literally crash land amongst villages. They are finally... <laughs> uh, Thankfully, working on mitigating that through two ways. One is launching from this from Wenchang Satellite Center. It's it's off totally out in the the it's 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 launching over the ocean like most um, other countries tend to do, which is a safer way so you don't have spent boosters or rockets falling on people or places or things that are important. But the other thing they're actually doing is some of their rockets now are utilizing a grid fin similar to the Falcon 9 um, on the booster, so that uh, not trying to recover it yet, but maybe gathering data on how to, you know, steer it, but literally so it does steer away from populated areas and into designated uh, zones. So I, I think, um, oh, so hang on, Fishtail Productions in our Discord, in Chinese there are no diphthongs, so IA sounds like uh, not, uh, so Chan Wen, oh, so there we go, Chan Wen, thank you, see? Learning something new every day. That's what this is all about, is learning together. Okay, so the payload mass here is 4,920 kilograms. That's a, a, almost 11,000 uh, pounds, basically. Uh, the satellites are going to low Mars orbit, 400,000 kilometers, 400,000 meter, wait, 400 kilometers. <sighs> it's, it's going to initially be heliocentric, and then, uh, and, and, the, not heliocentric, that's around the, the sun, sorry. It's, uh, very uh, hypercentric. What's that called? I'm, I'm totally blanking. It's 11 o'clock already. So, you know, my brain's already halfway shut down. Uh, but yeah, highly... Uh, yeah, what's the word I'm thinking? Anyway, it starts off elliptical. There we go. Very elliptical. Um, of course, it's of course, initially heliocentric, but once it hits Mars, what they do is they'll be in a very elliptical orbit. They'll slowly lower it through burns, and I don't remember if it's air breaking or not. Uh, but this is only, uh, will they be tempted to recover the first stage? No, they. there is no capability for the Long March series of rockets, or so far, hardly any other rocket besides electrons working on it with Rocket Lab. Uh, where will the first stage land? It will not land, but it said crash into the South China Sea. But again, I'd say that's a good thing. Crashing into the sea is much preferred over crashing over semi or sparsely populated areas. 
Will they be attempting to recover the fairings? No, this is not a capability to learn Long March 5 rocket. Uh, are these fairings new? Yes, these fairings are brand new for that reason, because they don't recover fairings. This will be the 15th launch for CASC in 2020, 340th launch of the Long March series rocket. So this is a, a long and, you know, impressive flight career already for, I mean, they've been, they've been launching since I think the eighties now, and they had to literally start from scratch, like literally make bolts and everything it's yeah so uh yeah it's been impressive to see how far they've come along but this is the second long march 5 flight in 2020 the fifth flight of a long march 5 rocket ever they've only had one failure and uh it's a pretty impressive vehicle so um this is what uh sorry again i'm gonna mispronounce it again um tian uh or wait ta uh chan wen okay sorry uh, so John Wen is, uh, it looks like this is the orbiter up here. There is a rover that will land on a lander. And then it looks, the lander looks a lot like the Phoenix rover and, um, and Mars Insight, you know, and then the rover is very small. It's, it's very, very small. And we're actually, I'm working on a video as we speak. I should actually probably pull this up. Um, let's see here. I should just pull this up here because I have a little thing. I'll do that after we do this. Sorry, I'm like scatterbrained. Um, but yeah, the, so these uh, the, the mission objectives for this, there are going to be five main objectives. Create a geological map of Mars. Investigate the different properties of the Mars soil with the potential of locating water ice. Analyze the composition of the surface. Explore the atmosphere and climate near at, and at the end at the surface and gain an understanding of the gravitational and electromagnetic fields of the planets. There we go. So yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. This is the Long March 5. Again, pretty impressive booster. They are using uh, the center core. The whole thing is liquid hydrogen, which is really impressive. Um, and uh, again, Austin whipped this up today because I decided today in our discord channel that we're, we're talking about it and it's like, we're going to try, I'm going to try streaming it. It it's, might not go well. I might be stuttering over the whole thing and floundering and you guys are going to be watching me do Wikipedia articles occasionally. But, uh, yeah, so Austin whipped this up today. So everyone say thank you, Austin, for, for whipping this baby up last minute for us. So we have this awesome resource and also thanks to the rest of the website crew. You guys are awesome for helping check fact check and all that stuff. You guys are incredible. Seriously, the amount of work you guys are doing is, is impressive. And I, I, we're all so thankful for the, the work being done. Um, and also, real quick, I wanted to say, everyone, say thank you to the mods. The mods have to work their butts off, probably especially on what's what's on screen right now, just because uh, for some reason this already is becoming a, a thing where I think there's going to be people um, saying things that aren't necessarily the nicest things to be said. Um, hang on, I have to fix this again real quick here. Um, forgot to change it like this. Launch bar. Here we go. You guys will get this beautiful thing again. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, let's get to answering some of your questions. So first off, right off the bat from the kilowatts, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, Team Space, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Uh, that is really, uh, yeah. Everyone say thank you to the kilowatts. That is awesome. That is it's crazy. You don't have to do that. Very thankful for that. Um, yeah. Jeez. Thank you. Everyone say thank you to the kill. Yes. Team space. We're here to just cheer everyone on guys. So please, please, please just keep your comments to yourselves. We're here to watch scientific discoveries. We're here to watch engineering be put to the test and pushing uh, and fighting. The only enemy we have tonight is Earth's gravity we are fighting against earth's gravity to break earth's gravitational bonds and reach out into the stars so that's that's the one thing you can fight right now you can also say, boo gravity go home well don't maybe not do that because then if there's no gravity it'd be really hard to do anything so maybe just if you want a common enemy tonight if you guys are looking to get your youtube comment blood boiling rage out and raise your blood pressure Take it out on gravity. We're all here tonight just to watch some people do some awesome things. So thank you, hashtag Team Space. Um, good, uh, Gojuria. Uh, go sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, will the boosters fall onto villages? No, like we said, this time they they are launching from their other launch site, which uh, does not do that. This is taking off from the the one. Well, was that what? Um, 
<laughs> um, what was it? Did I totally? Oh, Chan Wen. This is the Chan Wen. Wen Chong. Okay, I, sorry again. No idea, but yeah, from the Wen Chong Satellite Center in China. So uh, yeah, it'll be launching over the ocean. Thank you, Gojira. Brian Clausen, great new studio and love your content. Uh, gotta love all that's happening with space. Keep going. Thank you. Yes, there's a ton going on right now in space flight. There's a ton going on here at Everyday Astronaut. I know you guys are just aching for a new video. Trust me, I know too. We have a, we're all, we're hoping to still get it out this week is the goal. Uh, we're doing curiosity versus perseverance. We're showing you the upgrades that are being done, that are done to the Mars 2020 rover Perseverance compared to Curiosity, because Curiosity obviously is like an awesome robot. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be great, guys. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be really cool to see that the Perseverance Mars our rover is like massively impressive. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to. I break down a lot of the things. I get into some of the things that you guys should be looking forward to, like a drone flying around on Mars. Um, like I said, there is something unique about this particular mission, um, and I should probably try to pull it up here quick. Someday I'm going to get it so that Andrew can just uh, run all this stuff for me while I'm... <laughs> we need to just make that the habit so, so someone else can be running this. So I am not uh, trying to show you guys things. Uh, but here, check this out. So... Um, one of the things that's really interesting, I'm, oh, no, that's the wrong thing. Sky crane. So the thing that's crazy about the lander that, that they're launching today, it can be relatively close to the ground because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lightweight. The, the rockets can be relatively close to the ground because it's a lightweight and small rover. Uh, Curiosity is over a metric ton and it's, or per Perseverance is over a metric ton. And so it can't land with rockets firing that close to the ground. It'd be pretty bad. So the solution that uh, NASA came up with was the sky crane. And I just wanted to show you guys a little clip here from uh, the upcoming video that I'm working on. Hopefully this works okay. And let me know if, if the audio is good to go. But here we go. This is talking about why, and this is this also explains why they can use uh, this, this mode on the smaller rover for China. Now, if you're anything like me, maybe you've always wondered, how can that sky crane make any sense? It seems like there's a lot of extra parts, extra systems dangling from this rope and all this stuff. It seems like a lot more trouble than it's worth. Why don't they just put the rover on top of the sky crane and just land it like normal and drive off the top? Wouldn't that be a lot easier and lighter? Well, to answer that, there's really two main reasons. And the first one is you can't disrupt the surface too much. It can actually really end up interfering with the rover itself and making for big treacherous, you know, grooves in the, in the ground that then the rover has to try to get out and around. So you don't want the rockets firing directly next to the ground because they'll make these craters and just make a huge mess of everything. So if you did put the rover on top of it and you wanted to make sure those rockets weren't too close to the ground, you'd have to put it on like giant stilts or giant landing legs and those weigh a lot. And then now your rover's on top of a giant thing with landing legs and stilts. And to drive it off, you'd have to have this ramp or some kind of system then to get it off of that. And now you just added even more weight and complexity and made it pretty, <laughs> pretty risky, honestly. And the other reason is actually for control. It's a lot easier to let the crane just kind of hover roughly above the surface and then use a tether that has some slack in it. So there's a lot of wiggle room there. You basically just start lowering the rover until it touches the ground. Once it touches the ground, they cut those tethers and the sky crane just flies away. So it doesn't need to get down perfectly and just land very, very, very gently. So I'm still not good at switching between clips, but yeah, there we go. That's kind of why uh, Perseverance and Curiosity use Sky Crane. But again, uh, the Tianwen One doesn't need to do that because it's just a lot smaller. It's like a quarter the weight. And so the rocket can be a lot closer to the ground without worrying about, and look at how low slung this thing is. It's, it's just a different system altogether. So let's get back to your guys' questions. Oh, I, I didn't even have that pulled up here. There you go. It's just a different thing altogether. There you go. There you go. Now you have it. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to you guys' questions. Um, so thank you, Brian, again. Sorry, that was a long tangent. Um, uh, Sisman2000, China Mission, every everyday cosmonaut comrade. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I think it's time that we all start uh, celebrating in each other's achievements, you know. Um, and I know that there's already people kind of going nuts in chat. And guys, just a friendly reminder, we're all human. That not everyone that does something different than you is your enemy. You don't have to have enemies. You can choose 
to accept and cheer for people even if you disagree with them, okay? Even if you disagree with their ideology, yeah. You might have a difference of opinion. <gasps> oh no, doesn't mean you can't like be a human to them and just be like, good luck with this mission. You know, this is going to be a, if they pull this thing off, this arguably will be the most impressive Mars mission to date. How is that not awesome? I don't care about anything else. That's what we're here to celebrate. That's what we're here to watch. So just fingers crossed, guys. That's, that's what we're here for. Uh, thank you, uh, you, for the message. David Willis, yo, let's go to Mars. <laughs> thank you, David. Uh, good seeing you, my friend. And also, it's fun seeing you on All Gas with No All Gas No Breaks. I'm a big fan of All Gas No Breaks on YouTube. And David, you made it. You made it onto that show. If you guys aren't familiar, there's a rocket launch segment, and David starts just nerding out properly over like abort systems and all this stuff. Uh, and it's just so great. It made me so happy. Yeah, just really cheered me up. <laughs> All right, uh, Daniel, thank you so much for the pair. I really appreciate it. Uh, JP uh, uh, Loingsai says, hard to support the launch of stolen technology. Well, let's talk about that. I'm curious um, what exactly, uh, and I'm, again, I'm not here to like defend every, I'm, we're not here to debate and defend everything like a CCP. We're here to talk about the rocket and the engineering. So here is, uh, the development status of their cryogenic oxygen hydrogen YF-77 engine for Long Mars. I don't care if you straight up steal it, but this is actually a unique design. This is similar, pretty uh, familiar, almost akin to the RS-27A. It has a, it only has a single uh, pre-burner or gas generator in this case, because it's open cycle. A single gas generator, two separate pumps, runs on hydrogen. So it kind of has those two exhausts, uh, the exhaust ports coming down off of the, the turbines here and off the, the gas generator. And then it's, it, is act, it is actively cooled. So it's regen cooled. They do, unlike the RS-27A that's on the, the Delta IV, Delta IV Heavy, it's a, they're very similar engines, but the RS-27A has an ablatively cooled nozzle, has that carbon ablatively cooled nozzle. So it glows bright red, even though it's hydrogen powered, which is normally completely transparent because it's just water vapor. Uh, this engine is open cycle similar to the RS-25 or RS-27. Um, is that what it is? That what it, yeah. Um, and yeah, it, and there we go. I don't, I don't know what exactly of their engineering and everything that, that they developed in house here was stolen. I think m most published technologies, if they're published, it's kind of free. If you can figure out how to make it work, that's Touche, that's impressive. So yeah, this is this is that engine. I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm here to celebrate the fact that people figure this stuff out. It's 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 not easy. It is not easy. Um, Alice Edmonds, thank you for being awesome and streaming this. You're welcome, Alice. Again, I'm sorry if I'm floundering on this. This is outside of my comfort zone, but we're here together to learn. So I might just literally be surfing around on Wikipedia with you guys because this is not something um <laughs> this is not something I'm used to doing. So again, you know, people used to always ask, why do you only stream, you know, like United States launches and Rocket Lab? It's because I've literally done deep rundowns, deep dives on those vehicles. I know the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Starship development all the way through its current status. I know the Electron, I know ULA's lineup really well. And Blue Origin, I've done a deep dive on them. I know those vehicles by heart, like they're ingrained in my memory now and I can just easily freely talk about them. I can't easily freely talk about a rocket that I haven't fully researched. There's a lot of stuff that I'd have to learn to really become even remotely uh, topical on, on all the things that have happened with the Long March program. And I am, that's just way outside of my comfort zone. So we're gonna be winging it tonight. It's gonna be a little more free for all. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be showing my true colors. I'm just a normal person here trying to learn along with you guys. So um, yeah. Uh, that is a Delta V in our Discord. That's a great thing, but I don't know if I have enough of a knowledge base to talk about that, honestly. And I, I'd rather, that is definitely gleaming pretty far into polit politics, even though it's very spaceflight related. So I won't be getting into that tonight. I don't have a strong enough uh, perspective on that to really, to really talk about it. And I think that's irresponsible for me to talk about things that I don't really have perspective on. Um, okay. So thank you, Alice. Uh, Robert S. Hey, Tim. Let me see if we're getting into the ones that popped back up here. Uh, Robert S. Hey, Tim. What do you think about the future of a company like ULA with SpaceX doing so well currently? You know, I think 
Um, let me let me start off by saying that I'm a I'm a big fan of Yole. They have had uh, some of the most reliable and impressive rockets ever built. They I'm really excited for Vulcan. I I genuinely am. I really wish, really wish that it could have actually even beat Falcon Heavy online. And I really wish that it could at least have reusability from day one or almost immediately. That's, I just feel like they've poo-pooed reusability for so long and they're so relatively slow to develop a vehicle. Um, Because I remember hearing about, it was 2013 when, I think 2014 is when I first heard about smart reuse for Vulcan. That's six years ago in the rocket world. Nowadays, nowadays, Rocket World, that's that's a long time. Um, and I really hope that they start, uh, frankly, the, taking a little more risk. I think ULA is the least, it is the most risk averse company, rocket company out there. And that's worked phenomenally well for them for, uh, you know, payload assurance, timeline assurances, getting these high budget, you know, like the Mars mission where it's a billion dollar probe on top of it, a rover, like... They deserve that because they've been so risk adverse and they have proven that in their whole philosophy top down. Um, SpaceX is working the opposite end of that spectrum where they're uh, purposefully in development phase being as risky as possible to get the results as soon as possible and having the wiggle room and the budget and the the wherewithal to just be like, okay, it doesn't matter if it blows up because whatever, we'll just build another one, you know, no big deal. ULA just doesn't, they don't do that. They they don't do that. They engineer and get it down totally solved on paper before they even order the machines to build the rocket. And SpaceX is like, paper? Here, let's just start building a rocket. You know, like that's their current work pace with Starship, I feel like. And, uh, you know, I so Loopy does say Falcon didn't have reusability, and Loopy's always going to be a, a good voice of reason for ULA. Falcon didn't have reusability from day one, and Vulcan was approved because of the Russian engine sanctions. Boeing and such kept vetoing until they're forced to let ULA innovate. That is true. It there is some natural politics involved with ULA in general, with the basically forced formation of Boeing and Lockheed Martin. So there's going to be even some inherent non like they're not incentivized to innovate like other companies would be just in the way the the company structured so i hope that that the parent companies still see the value in ula still see the potential for ula and and they just start slowly <laughs> letting letting that tap open and let ula employees and and teams just really really push forward and and start running right now because I think they need to personally and I think they absolutely can and I think Vulcan will be a, a very very high performance rocket and an extremely high performance rocket and if they can get it to compete financially uh, it it'll stick around for a long time so yeah that's that's my thoughts um, Luke thank you for saying hi it's too late for me in indiana to watch it but enjoy the launch and tim thanks for being so positive your iowa optimism is contagious thank you sir you're welcome luke glad to glad to hear from another midwesterner i appreciate that uh kayla bird sorry it appears your message has been deleted again uh, please everyone i appreciate super chats but keep like keep it positive here guys we're not focusing on other th uh, not necessarily opinions but other Issues that might exist around the world. We're focusing on space flight. Again, our only enemy tonight is gravity. That's the only thing we have to conquer to get to Mars is gravity. So, um, yep. So, um, oh, good. We do have a better stream pulled up here. I'm going to try getting this ready for you guys so we can at least kind of have it in the background. I think that'd be a great thing at this point. Because <laughs> we have been scratching our heads here to really try to find a good a good live stream. So, um Let's see. No, the only problem I have with this is, is this someone else's uh, graphic and stuff? I wonder where they're getting it from. Um, I don't know if I want to pull that up. Um, Andrew, if you can find me the source of that, because that one has their own graphics and stuff. And I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know if we want to be doing that. So. Okay, so let's get back to talking about um, the Long March 5. I just wanted to answer a few more questions because this is, again, for myself because I don't know this rocket very well. But uh, the Long March 5, again, heavy lift launch vehicle, capable of 25 tons to low Earth orbit. That is a, that's that's a, a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. 
that is more than that's prob that's a little bit more than an expendable Falcon Nine. Oh, I guess it's not a heavy lift launch vehicle. Sorry, I, I keep saying that. Uh, twenty five kilograms to low Earth orbit does not get into the heavy lift launch class. That is fifty tons technically. Um, but yeah, it is. Um, Oh, <laughs> uh, MC official play in our Discord says, what about upper level winds and weather? They are also always enemies. You're right. Tonight we're fighting gravity, upper level winds and weather. Those are our enemies, common enemy tonight. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can uh, we, if we can figure that out. So um, just uh, we also I have a good question here from Chevy Bowtie in Discord. How long does the trip take the trip? No matter what, pretty much when you launch during this launch window, thanks to the pork chops or the, the actual delta V required to get there, you'll end up landing right around the same time, like middle of February. Uh, that's just how orbital mechanics work. You can do a little bit different. You can slide that a little bit here and there. But for instance, uh, particularly with Perseverance, when it launches, no matter when it launches, it'll land on Mars on the same exact date. And that's just the way that works. And we'll talk about that again in the video, in the upcoming video that I'm working on. So um, yeah, anyway, the size of this rocket is five meters wide for the core diameter. It's it's a big, pretty big beast, you know. Um, and it's, uh, let's see here. I want to show, yeah. So it's, it's it's comparable to the Delta IV, Ariane 5, Proton, Falcon 9. So it's not quite heavy lift, like Falcon Heavy, but it is close to a Falcon Heavy fully reusable as far as payload capacity. The boosters is four of these bad boys uh, with almost 10,000 yeah, 10, kilonewtons of thrust, a little over 2 million pounds of thrust. Uh, pretty decent specific impulse. And that's, I mean, that's that's impressive. That's 300 seconds of uh, at sea level, 335 seconds in a vacuum. That is great. That is, uh, I think, a little bit better then um, I think that's a little bit better than the than the Merlin. I, but it, it's also closed cycle. They have a closed cycle, oxygen-rich RP-1 um, engine. It, it seems to be very similar to kind of the NKs and the RDs. But yeah. All right. Um, then the first stage has two of those engines that we were talking about earlier, which are very impressive, sporting 310 seconds in at sea level and 430 seconds in a vacuum. So they're very overexpanded engines for sea level. They're properly vacuum extended basically uh, for the first stage core. And this does run on uh, hydrolox, so liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Second stage, also still impressive with 442 seconds, more vacuum optimized nozzle basically. Uh, and a similar engine that again runs on, on uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. There is an optional third stage, it will not be used tonight, but which is confusing to me because it seems like this would be the type of stuff where you'd want that extra third stage, but they seem to use that mostly just for low earth orbit missions. Um, it almost seems like it's they kind of use it as, as like how Rocket Lab uses it as a kick stage or uses a kick stage. It just seems to be almost like a little kick stage type of, of vehicle. So there we go. That is the rocket. Oh, I'm hearing some stuff. Hold on. I don't know which one that is. Hold on here. Where's that coming from? Show yourself, great. Great video. <laughs> what is happening? All right. Um, okay, so we're gonna try. We are gonna try and pull up this and just have this in the background while we're while we're watching because I think this is gonna be the best we get tonight. Um, and in which case, as soon as I pull this up, I'm gonna go ahead and go like this. There is the more official countdown. Still not sure which stream this is or anything like that. We're trying. Trying our best out here. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so uh, again, thanks, Luke and Caleb. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Summit Rat or Summit Route? route? Um, let's see. I'm, I'm also making sure I'm... Because I, I can pull these up on screen really soon. <whistles> Where are we? Okay, so this is from... Where did that go? Summit rat, summit rat, summit rat, summit rat. Where'd you go? <laughs> thank you for the membership. D, let's just enjoy this. Yes, absolutely, D, thank you. RH67 Camaro. I don't I don't have a lot like the kilowatts, but I love the info you share. Hey, I really appreciate that. You don't have to do that, but I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the kilowatts went very <laughs> above and beyond generous. Thank you again. Uh, Zachary Deal says, cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good tip amount. Uh, Will Black, uh, you, let's see, 
So Will Black says, you do know that China's space program is part of the Chinese military, right? Why is China not allowed on the ISS? You pretty much said it yourself there. Um, I think it has mostly to do the geo geopolitical and geopolitics. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, space is always going to be, you know, seated in military. It was developed initially by military for spy satellites, communications, um, Space is inherently somewhat military. Um, and uh, yeah, that doesn't change the fact that it doesn't mean, I mean, we all still get excited when we watch like a GPS launch or, or you know, in the United States, we all get excited when there's a, a you know, national reconnaissance uh, mission, you know, with some kind of secret payload or Zuma satellite and stuff like that. So it's, it's no different. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that type of stuff. Again, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to tell you what's right and wrong when it comes to spaceflight. I'm here to talk about the rockets, talk about the mission, talk about the how we get there, why it's important, the significance, and, and just share with you guys uh, something to look forward to for once. That's that's what <laughs> that's what this has become for me. Spaceflight has become my therapy because it's like 2020 is already just super screwy. I, I can't stand what's been going on in 2020. It's been an awful year for so many things. Let's just come together on spaceflight. That's what this is for. This is for us to unite and cheer and get excited. So, yeah. Um, so, so thank you. Who is this? Team Dodd, Team Elon, Team Space. Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you so much. Who is this? And it's funny saying, who is this out loud? I didn't even think about it. But who is this? Thank you. Uh, Peter Danilov, um, as always, thanks for the comment, content, Tim. Uh, go Tianwen1. We're all on the same team here. Absolutely. Thank you for that mentality, Peter. D, geez, D, thank you so much. Let's all just celebrate all human ingenuity and progress, please. Yes, again, please, we're just here to set aside differences for once and, and ideologies because physics is physics no matter where you live anywhere in the universe as far as we're concerned at least on our universe and again that's our one common thing we can all just come together and uh, and be talking about so um, I did want to point out really quick before we go on but again thank you D everyone say thank you to D that is unbelievably generous you really don't have to be tipping especially when I'm floundering here like this anyway um, yeah oh thank you all right um so I did want to point out the smoke here, what looks like smoke, again, just like all rockets that use any kind of liquid propellant, cryogenic propellants, that's not smoke, that's water vapor, that's condensation basically, just like on a really cold day if you were to open a freezer or have dry ice out, um, it's the humidity in the atmosphere uh, freezing into little particles of ice and just forming little ice clouds, you know, that's, that's all that is because the liquid oxygen inside the rocket is like minus 187 degrees Celsius. They don't super chill it like SpaceX does where they take it to like minus 207, I think something around there, very cold, almost to freezing for liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen is even colder. Liquid hydrogen is almost completely, uh, is very close to absolute zero. So it's, it's very, very, very cold. So liquid hydrogen rockets usually require more insulation on the tanks to make sure that it doesn't boil off because when it is that cold, um, you know, the ambient air temperature and the sun beating down on the, the heat built inside the air is going to, is going to warm up the rocket. It's going to warm up the skin of the vehicle. And that in turn warms up the propellant inside the vehicle. And if you have something that's almost at absolute zero in order to remain a liquid, and then after that, it boils off and turns back into a gas. Again, you can think of water as the most common thing that we as humans relate, tend to relate to, at least me personally. I relate to water where, you know, water below zero degrees Celsius is now a solid. Above zero, it's, you know, zero to 100 degrees. It's going to be a liquid. And above 100 degrees, it's going to be a gas, right? It's going to boil off into steam. And um, that's exactly, that's the same thing that, uh, that all, all particles will do that, or in all elements. So hydrogen, in order to make it liquid, you have to freeze it. You have to get it really cold, really, really, really cold. And uh, so it's, it's hard to contain. So that's why you will see a lot of insulation on vehicles that are hydrogen powered or hydrolox powered, as we call it. 
Um, and then again, in liquid oxygen, very cold around, around minus 200 degrees Celsius. Very, very, very cold. Same situation. Oxygen will turn into a liquid if you cool it down enough. And actually in oxygen, I know in particular, when it goes from a liquid back into a gas, like, you know, when we breathe it, we're obviously breathing in the gas of oxygen in its gaseous state. When you, when it expands from a liquid to a gas, it expands a thousand times. So that's what a lot of the venting you see a rocket is from that, is from it going from a, a liquid being really, really cold, warming up from the ambient air, expanding out into a gas, and it expands a thousand times. And if they didn't bleed it from the rocket and, and open up valves, the rocket would, it would explode, it'd rupture because of the immense pressure building up inside the tanks. So you, you will see venting of rockets as they have boil off and as the, the fluids inside uh, rays. It's really hard to picture and hard to relate to the idea that rockets are f f really cold. They're like unbelievably cold. You can't go up and just touch it. Your hand would freeze to it. And out of the bottom end, once they light it, is temperatures that are unbelievably hot. So you have like the coldest of cold right next to the hottest of hot. And especially like when you're talking about the the regen channels of the, the 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 actual rocket engine inside those little inside the walls of the rocket engine they run cryogenic fuel and of course it's touching uh, really hot gas hot exhaust gas that's you know thousands of degrees and uh, so just imagine that in that little section there there's a huge temperature gradient and it's just amazing that the stuff all works genuinely amazing that it all works. Uh, okay, so um, Science for Kids, hello from Oregon. Thank you so much. And Batman, thank you for the tips. Uh, again, sorry, if you want your message to main, remain on screen, please just keep your comments about spaceflight specifically. Spaceflight, rockets, Mars, cheering, celebration, just positivity. That's the kind of community I run around here. And if you're not about that, there's plenty of other places you can go on the internet to foster negativity, but not in my house. Team space, my friends. Um, Let's see, I actually can pull this one up because the thing is back up here. So let me give this a try. Um, the Chinese rover uses the the rocker boogie suspension that NASA uses, that NASA got from the Soviets. Yeah, it's a very similar, exactly. It's the same, uh, it's a classic tried and true lander leg technology. I mean, if it ain't fixed, don't broke it, right? Or, wait, if it ain't broke, don't fit. If it ain't fixed, don't broke it. That too. If it, if it ain't fixed, don't broke it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There you go. I can finally do it. Um, let's see. Good question here from uh, from Bl uh, Blutify. Where did I get my space posters? These are those are actually from SpaceX back in the day. I don't know if they still did them. They they had a run of these like three or four years ago. Don't know if they're still around. Um, I know you can't really tell on here, but you can tell on my other shots. Uh, but in the background are posters, and then in between those are big sound absorbing panels to help reduce. Um, echo and those ones are sound absorbing. I have sound um, deflecting or uh, what's the word again? It's already after 11. So my brain's officially shut down. Uh, but sound diffusion panels that help uh, scatter echoes and, and make it so there's not as much like slapback echo and stuff like that on this side of the camera. And on that side, I do have some sound absorbing. So kind of have it have it all. So um. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next one here. Aerojet says, um, Aerojet Rocketdyne, uh, <laughs> Aerojet Rocketdyne RS25. When uh, will you be doing a video on hybrid rocket propulsion and maybe comparison between solids, liquids, and hybrids? Uh, Chat is crazy. Haha, <laughs> go rocket burr. <laughs> go burr. <laughs> rocket go burr. I love it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I that's definitely on the to-do list. The to-do list is ever-growing. And we really have to get focused and just get back to just creating videos. Like I said, we are in the middle of production on one right now, hoping to still get it out by the weekend. Uh, we have a few more things we're working on, but uh, you guys in Discord and, and Patreon will definitely be seeing the, the, you guys will have to check my work, but they get early access to things and help catch errors before they go live. Because trust me, there's always errors and you internet pedants will always be like, actually the blah, 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 blah. Blah blah blah, <laughs> you know, and you're right. And I hate being wrong because I, I try to te treat my videos online as a source and as a resource, and uh, I, I want them to be academically correct. And I can't change it online, you know. I can't fix problems once it's posted. So that's why it's so important, and why. Um, oh, thank you, LC one two three. I see you. Interesting. <laughs> don't know what that was. Hopefully, we don't get some creepy messages in the near future. Um, but maybe, you know what we could do? 
I'm gonna go like this just so just in case there's something weird. Hang on. I'm gonna try doing this. No, that doesn't work at all. I probably just messed a lot of things up. I probably messed up everything in the world. Yep, I did. <laughs> oh, whoopsie doodle. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll close that off now. Get back to talking to you guys. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I have a lot of a lot of videos to work on, and we're cranking on them. We have um, two. We still have part two and three kind of of SLS versus Starship. Uh, that, again, got all scripted out. It was like 30 pages of script, and it got broken up as new information came out. And so now I'm just trying to fix and fill those information gaps. A lot's changed in the last like two or three months with SLS. So uh, we're, we're almost done with the fixing and updates to that script so that I can shoot that here relatively soon. But we're also working on, I don't love, you're going to have to, or I'm going to pre-apologize for the audio on Perseverance versus uh, Curiosity. I don't necessarily love the microphone situation on that. So we're going to be trying a different uh, proper uh, boom mic up here, hopefully just out of frame for the scripted videos. I still like this one. It just sounds so sexy um, for podcasting and for these live streams. But when we do scripted videos now, we're trying to have a different look and feel. And I'm just not in love with the audio. So we're still working on that. So I'll, I'll be making improvements. I'll be making improvements each week or each video you guys see. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Our, uh, this is again from RH67 Camaro. Not everything is stolen, just advancements for humankind. Let's all get on Elon Musk's level. I mean, these days, I feel like back in the day, you invented something properly. You like actually had a fresh idea and a fresh, totally novel concept. And then you sold it. And now your salad shooter is like the one and only salad shooter or whatever. After that, like we're to the point now where like intellectual property is getting weird and copyrights are weird because it's like, well, actually, I, I copyrighted the idea of a phone doing turning a 90 degrees and then on, on Thursdays. That's that was my idea. I copyrighted that. Like, I just, I'm getting so confused. Like, where do we draw the line with that stuff? And uh, again, maybe this is getting a little bit political, but I'm trying to just kind of put it in context. Um, one of the things, <laughs> uh, that is uh, an alien takeover, I do believe. So um, everyone, uh, duck, I don't know what's going on. I'm very scared. That was the largest hand I've ever seen in my life. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the theories is that like we should no longer be worrying about copyrights and the new race is no longer to have the idea, but it's to manufacture and, and get the idea out there first. Like that's the new race. Stop trying to pre almost like people are uh, in the, the technology pace of things. It's almost like people are, are trying to preemptively prevent people from making their idea when nowadays it should be like uh, those ideas are, are just a dime a dozen. There's oh, those ideas flowing everywhere, especially with access to information now. So now the real race is how do you get it out into market and how do you be, be the best at producing that thing? And that's definitely something that China has subscribed to. That's a whole debate for a different night. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, have I seen... This is a good question here from Jeffrey uh, Abraham. Have you seen Space Force on Netflix? I have seen a few episodes... Uh, in general, I, I like, I love Steve Carell and in general, I liked it. But the, uh, the one thing that I had, even, even though I think the show was created by a lot of people that are fans of space flight and are fans of space, because there's like a negative connotation and a negative tone to a lot of the sarcasm, it, it does damage. It, it does damage to these, the, the overall mission of space flight. Like they'll just be like. How many schools is that, you know, like when talking about developing a rocket or something? And that's just not the way to think about things. That's not a fair, you, you can't, you have to look at like the total ROI of, of space flight. You know, uh, if we didn't have rockets in space flight, think about the industries that wouldn't exist. Our smartphones, no way. Those are gone. You know, they rely so heavily on aerospace derived technologies. You know, think about what technologies spun out from space flight and how many more technologies are spinning out of the things that we're doing right now to get further into space. You just can't quantify that and you can't compare it equally. Schools are important. Schools are extremely important. Healthcare is extremely important. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, oh, hold on. I think that's, <laughs> that is a little bit creepy. You're right, Andrew. Um, okay, so anyway, we'll keep going here. 
Um, let's see. I tomorrow. Let's see. Well, I guess today. This is uh, if if you're talking about on Thursday. Thursday is a packed day for me. I have uh, record a podcast every week called Our Ludicrous Future. So we do recording tomorrow. I have like four other things on my plate. I cannot be doing a live stream tomorrow. Um, so, or, or today, I guess, for, for you, wherever you are. But uh, yeah, so I know that every, a lot of people are, are saying that they really want uh, more content from me. Don't forget, every single week I do a podcast. I talk about space flight. The other guys on the channel, we talk about futurism and science and, and just just hang out and nerd out in general. If you're one of those people that looks for long form uh, podcasts to listen to for your commutes or whatever, definitely subscribe to my podcast. It's called Our Ludicrous Future, or you can just go to olfpod.com where you can subscribe here on YouTube. You can find it um, on your favorite podcast player. I know I say this almost every week, but I just feel like people don't realize that there's other things than what I do right here. And that is something that I have a lot of fun doing. And I think it deserves a lot bigger audience personally, because I really like hanging out with those guys. I think we have a lot of fun discussions and we are very different minded and we have a lot of fun debates. So, um, but it's all, it's all fun. So definitely if, if you're looking for more content, you want to hear me talk about space each week, olfpod.com. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, bamboo or bamboo hip hop uh, in our discord says, what if we don't have time to watch a two hour podcast? Well, guess what? You can go to olfpod.com slash highlights and watch the highlights channel where you can hear just my takes on space flight each week. I should probably be posting those more often, but you can subscribe to that and then you can just get the snippets that you want. If you want to just hear about space flight, OLF, olfpods.com slash highlights. Um, if you want to only hear like starship updates or blah, 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 that's where you'll find it. That's where you'll find it. And uh, yeah, that's that's what we do. All right, so um, this comes from, from Seabass Branch. Thank you, Tim. Support all forms of space exploration and advancements of science and engineering to the stars. Thank you so much, Seabass. You are exactly right. That's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, from, uh, from Yuji Lin, Tim, you are the best. We are watching an incredible achievement by human beings. Haters, please go away. Yep. Again, you're in my house here. You're, you're in everyday astronauts house. This is team space. We're here to just cheer for everyone working. It's the same physics that we're all dealing with here. So thank you so much. Um, yep. Uh, same thing here from D again. Can we all please come together for stuff like this at this time in history, especially at this time in history? where there are literally people whose jobs it is to work on dividing us as a, as in the United States, as a country and in the world, just forming rifts. That is their job. There are people that are basically paid trolls who are out there getting paid. And I don't know, this might be a conspiracy theory of mine that I'm making up on the spot, but you can just tell and you can see it in, in, in the, the bots and all these things that are just working to create a rift in humanity if anything, I know how Elon Musk is terrified of AI, of artificial intelligence, and he always says, like, if we don't watch AI, it's going to destroy us all. Maybe it's so advanced and it took off so secretly and is so advanced that it's literally infiltrating social media to divide humans to just blow us all up and make us all kill each other. And then AI wins and is like, haha, now I can build stuff with my robotic arms. Who knows? But the point is, like, we are so divided. We are so divided right now. Everything has become some kind of this or that. And people just now hate whoever they disagree with. And, uh, and, they, and, they, and they like who they agree with. And there's nothing else in between. So, um, yeah, that's true. Yu Yang, exactly. It's not a conspiracy thing. People, people make fake political websites and arrange rival protests in hope of violence. Yeah, it's... It's a sad reality. And I think we need to, if, if you want to be like, wake up, sheeple, that's what we need to wake up to. It's that people are trying to divide us as humans. And space, I love it because it unites us and it gives us a common goal, makes us work together. Even if in a competition, we're still working on the common goal of exploring spaceflight. And yeah, awesome stuff. I mean, it's honestly exciting stuff that we can look forward to and cheer on. So that's what it's all about. Um, from Dylan Hicks. Hi, how's it going, Dylan? Uh, hi, Tim. Uh, when we have more baby onesie merch for sale, maybe a new one altogether. Love dressing her in everyday astronaut merch. Dylan, you're in luck. We have some new merch that we're working on right now, including baby onesies. There will be a new future Martian baby onesie. There's also going to be a baby 
Uh, I think we're doing a full flow stage combustion cycle baby onesie. So if you have a baby or, or kids, I think we're doing kids t-shirts too now of those two shirts as well. Um, so hopefully that's, um, hopefully that's good news for those of you that have a, a tiny human in your life, uh, and are also fans of space flight. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. Oh, and also this week, patrons, you'll get access to it first. We have a new version of full flow stage combustion cycle hoodies. I will post that for you guys. Um, in let's see here. I, actually, I, I can do it right now because this is pretty sick. Well, actually, um, there is, I, I probably shouldn't even be mentioning it right now because it's technically, hold on. I actually have to do something at this exact moment. <laughs> um, one second, guys. Um, because <laughs> I think what we're going to do, um, we're going to have this thing. Okay. Yeah, we're going to give um, the patrons access to that first. So, um, Ferran, no, we don't have any updates on grid finale coasters. I don't know what happened to that. We need new ones, though. Okay. Um, Let's see, from KW Cosmonaut here. Thanks for covering China Launch. Shout out to the mods too. Yes, again, everyone say thank you to the mods for trying to uh, to wrangle together people on the internet. It's a very difficult full-time job basically while we're streaming here. So thank you. Uh, Chris Harris here. Uh, another two towards sending Tim Dodd to Mars. Chris! For the thousandth time, I don't, don't make me go to Mars. I don't, Mars would suck. I don't want to go to Mars. I like swimming pools and I like my family and I like pizza and I like, I don't fly kites, but like, I, I don't want to not be able to fly a kite. Can you imagine just being like, yeah, you're done with kites. Yeah, you don't get kites anymore. Yeah, you like flying? Nah, uh, drones, forget about it, unless it's the, the Ingenuity, which technically is, yeah, a multi-rotor UAS, but uh, yeah, and even that, three minutes of flight time, no thank you. I want to be flying around here all willy-nilly, you know, doing things. Maybe I haven't ever jumped out of a plane, but I, maybe I want to do that with a parachute and, and, and do some skydiving. Maybe. Can't do that on Mars without propulsively landing. I don't know. I just don't want to go to Mars. Don't make me go to Mars right now. Once, Once it's like, you know, there's some habitability and maybe like a cool place to hang out and like a cool movie theater and stuff. Maybe, maybe then, you know, maybe then I'll do it. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I might be more on the Elon Musk side of things. Like I, I, I want to die on Mars, but not on impact. I don't even want to die on Mars. Like I'm going to die here. I'll go to the moon for a couple of weeks and hang out and bounce around, especially inside like a giant dome that's pressurized to like a full bar of atmosphere, uh, 14.7 PSI. And, you know, hold on to, like, some cardboard wings and literally just fly around like it's no big deal. Yeah, I'll do that for sure. Because you can just go there, come back, no big deal. You're not going to miss years of your friends and family's lives and gatherings and, again, swimming pools and boats. I like boats. Uh, Texas Patriot, a <laughs> dollar. Thank you so much. It's awesome. I really appreciate you. Um, hey, apparently... Sargento Cheese, the cheese company, says congrats on 700,000. I think, does that mean we crossed 700,000 subscribers tonight while we are live streaming? Hold up. Yes, we have. That's awesome. Wow. Didn't expect, uh, I, didn't, I didn't expect ever to get 100,000 subscribers. And here we are tonight looking at 700,000. I really appreciate that, guys. Um, let's see, just making sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's fun. Um, let's see from Alice, since Giga China is a thing, SpaceX China. Oh, I think there's pretty strong sanctions right now, uh, politically to have anything like that. Uh, I think Elon Musk would, would certainly love to just he loves the Chinese workforce. He's he's really praised how quickly Giga, uh, Giga China, Giga, Giga Shanghai came online and how high a quality the cars they're building are already because they just have manufacturing down packed like they are the new manufacturing workhorses. So um, 
Yeah. Oh, gotcha, Andrew. Okay. Well, let me see. I'm going to still try pulling this up here real quick and just take a little look skis. See if it's any better. It is a little different. Yeah, definitely lower quality though. Okay, we'll keep going here. Um, yeah, I don't think SpaceX China would be happening no matter how bad some people would want that to happen. Uh, David Willis, unrelated question, but I kind of want to know, will you live stream the hot fire for SLS at Stennis? Yeah, I think when I, the full green run of, of SLS, uh, I was originally hoping to go for media, but it seems like right now travel is uh, increasingly getting to be a worse and worse idea in the United States. Um, and I would hold off on it. Uh, but I would definitely try to stream it. That's I think that's going to be really exciting to, to finally see all four RS-25s running uh, and to see that rocket actually prepping uh, to, to fly for the first time. So um, that will be awesome. Okay. Um, okay, we, we covered this a little bit earlier, but this is uh, you must have missed it a little bit ago. Uh, 13X Samurai, good morning, guys. What a great day for launch. Question for experts is Long March all solids. It's no solids. Long, uh, oh, maybe, I don't know about some of the other, they, I know one of them uses, some of the other long marches use uh, hypergolics, but uh, but this particular rocket uses RP-1 for its boosters, so uh, basically kerosene, the same thing as Falcon 9 for its outer four core, outer four boosters. The core stage and the upper stage are both liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, so hydrolox, uh, which is why we see an, ex an excessive, what well, looks like an excessive amount of venting. Um, yeah. There we go. Subscribe to LC LC123 and Astro Society for more live streams. Cool. Um, okay, from Kai, how's it going? Uh, hey Tim, in this mission, how many modes of failure does this rocket have, and where is the most vulnerable part of the mission, or is it classified? Um, I mean, rockets have infinite modes of failure. There's no like. I mean, it's not like the days of the space shuttle where we had blackout zones of failure where, where you could know whether or not, uh, you know, where, where there wouldn't be abort windows and things like that, where you, they kind of had areas where they knew there were no contingencies, there were no backups. Um, that was back in the day. That's not really a thing for normal rockets. It's not like, you know, right at... I mean, any boost, any separation event is always a, a pretty big thing. Max Qs, so point of maximum aerodynamic pressure is always a big one. Um once the vehicle's off the pad, so getting off the pad's one thing, uh, max Q in order, this is pretty relevant to pretty much all rockets, getting off the pad's the first thing, safely getting off the pad, clearing the pad, um, because there's just so, the engine's off the fire, they have to get up to operating pressures, they have to get up to operating, you know, everything, they have to let go with the launch clamps, then that vehicle will start to climb. There's a, just a good amount of sequence of events that's probably considered relatively risky, um, compared to just like sitting there like it is now. Once it's flying and things are running smoothly, hopefully, the next big event is max Q, maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's when it, the vehicle's accelerating through the atmosphere, right? So the, uh, you know, the wind pushing back against it is getting stronger and stronger, but the rocket's also climbing. So although the rocket's speeding up, there's a point where the atmosphere is getting thinner and those two things kind of converge. So even though the rocket's getting faster, the atmosphere is getting thinner. And so after a certain point, the rocket although it's continuing to speed up, the pressure on the nose cone of the vehicle will be dropping because it's obviously getting higher in altitude. The ambient pressure around it's lower, even though it's speeding up. So uh, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure is the biggest uh, during that regime of flight normally. The next big one is stage separations. Anytime you have to like drop something off of a rocket, you have to have all those things work right. If they don't drop, it's a failed mission. If they drop incorrectly and smack back into the rocket, it's a failed thing. Uh, re reignition of engines or ignition of engines in space is pretty hard. You know, you have to let go, uh, typically do something that settles the fuel back down into the tanks, relight that engine or light that engine. I mean, there's just a lot of sequence of events. Nose fairing cone separation is a big one. If the fairing doesn't separate, it can lead to a loss in a mission. As a matter of fact, one of the losses of missions for Falcon, uh, for Deltas wasn't that the nose cone was, was weak and like, you know, broke off. It was that they, they made it, they miss the the supplier of the aluminum or steel uh, in the explosive bolt region. They made it too strong, and they falsely, illegally, and falsely misclassified the type of steel and everything. So when it was being used on the nose cones, uh, the explosive bolts weren't separating properly. And I think it, it's it happened to a couple Minotaur rockets and a Delta II. I remember like oh. 
um, OCO1, uh, or uh, it was on a Delta II, the Delta II mission OCO1, uh, had that problem where the fairing didn't separate because the material in it was mis like mis yeah, which is just crazy. So, all right, so uh, Chorkle, how's it going? Uh, bigger countdown text. Yeah, we got it now that we switched. We'll probably update that a little bit for those of you that are on mobile. Um, yeah, sorry. Again, I don't know what we're going to be getting here from from the internet for our live stream. I have no idea. We're just rebroadcasting it and hoping this is a, a too big of a moment to really uh, try to try to figure it out. So I wish there was just an official source we could go to. Um, let's see. New member from Understanding Autism. Awesome. Welcome, Understanding Autism, and thanks for becoming a member. Let's see here. From Chaz. Uh, thanks for educating me on how small the commercial rocket market is now. Thoughts on the short slash long term future? Well, in my opinion, space is is the next big place to invest. In in my personal opinion, um, it's only increasing in activity and the number of satellites and the infrastructures that we're working on. But even exploring space and getting deeper into space is just increasing. It's just changing. So, uh, you know, especially as the cost of flight comes down. Um, you know, as the cost of space flight comes down, the access increases. And it's just kind of this, this tumbling effect where because now it's cheap enough to build something, we'll build more things in space. We'll start doing asteroid mining. We'll start using resources on the moon to produce materials that would be virtually impossible here on Earth, just like the book Artemis. I mean, it's all, it's all just projecting into like what makes sense. Producing energy off of the Earth. Jeff Bezos is a big fan of the idea of, of having Earth be like a sanctuary planet where there's, uh, it's almost like a giant uh, international park. And then people and, and heavy industry and, and energy production would be moved off of Earth. I think that makes sense. Uh, and that's achievable in the near future. There's nothing that says we can't do it. If we, if, we, if we had no other choice but to do that, say something catastrophic happened and all of a sudden Earth became in, 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 in wait, uninhabitable. There we go. Uh, and we were forced with that. We could absolutely do that. We could 100% make that a reality. Um, and I think, you know, the trend would be to go in that direction. So... Yeah, the commercial rocket is relatively small right now, but it's growing and the demand is growing and the demand will grow. And yeah, um, a good question here from um, from Kunshong says, uh, what are the towers about? Those are lightning towers. And what they do is they create, um, I, I still need to actually, this is a video that I'll be working on and it's, it's on the list. <laughs> And I've even shot parts of it at a launch pad, like sitting there pointing out the, the towers and talking about them a little bit. But those are literally there to mitigate lightning and create um, like ionization, different charges or whatever to make sure that that area is not struck by lightning. Uh, I used to think they're like a lightning rod that is like, hey, we'll direct the lightning to us so it doesn't hit the rocket. But I think it's more about... And again, this is something that I have to research, so I'm just talking off out of my butt. But it's to make sure the end goal is to make sure lightning doesn't strike the rocket. And I don't know if it does it by being like, hey, strike me instead. Or if it's like, hey, by having these up here, it creates this whole like negative pressure or something. So um, let's see. Launch time is now 441 UTC, which is going to be 1140. So that is in three minutes. Okay. 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 Um. Wait, I think it's that's still correct. Forty-one UTC, yeah, that will be in two minutes. I think we're still good. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, we have time for probably about one more, and this timer clock might be way off. We have no idea. So once we get within about a minute, I'm going to be kind of watching. Uh, from understanding autism. Um, hey, big fan, and you have been a huge influence on me learning everything space-related. Um, also, are you going to be live-streaming the Soyuz launch as well? I, I talked about that earlier. Thanks, Thank you for your support, Understanding Autism. Uh, again, unfortunately, I will not be able to do the, the Soyuz launch tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is my busy, busy, busy day. If it slips, I might have time, but we're in the middle of like four things, and we're coming up on Star Hoppers uh, live-stream coverage that I'll have to be doing soon, too, when they do Static Fire and hopefully the hop soon thereafter. So I'm, it's kind of go time for me right now. Um, um, okay, so if 
440. No, it's 441 UTC though. Um, that's true. There doesn't seem to be signs of venting. Yeah, this is near the coast. This is actually an island. We have not done pointy end up, flamey end down. That is a good call. Yeah, there is no longer venting, which actually could mean the vehicle is fully topped off. Um, but we do need to point out that the vehicle does appear to be pointy end up. And ladies and gentlemen, I can officially say flamey end down. We have we have observed the orientation of the vehicle. Pointy end up, flamey end down. This thing is good to go. Sands scrub. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Ferran. All right, uh, let's keep going here. Thank you so much from IGVC1876. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. For Comet Neowise, I have seen it. I'm, I'm going to tune in here, guys. But doodling astronaut, I've, I went and saw Comet Neowise last night. Uh, it definitely seems to be getting pretty dim. I had to find it with my phone first. That's how dim it was. Um, but we're going to see. It looks like we're really getting close to potentially launching. So I'm just going to kind of shut up here and see what we get. <laughs> I think that's in reference to the actual countdown maybe off from the 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 actual stream. <laughs> Now is not the time to adjust the camera. No, it, it was great. It was really just fine. <laughs> hmm. Who knows? Who knows? We're, we're waiting to see. Again, we don't have any information. We are flying blind here on this, folks, tonight. So I have no idea... Uh, we're just going to watch this until something happens or doesn't happen. And at some point, I'll be like, okay, we're done watching because nothing happened. So, um, yeah. <laughs> we have a... Yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know. I'm going to check on this, see if there's something else. Here, I can pull this up. Um, no, I really don't want a sideways one here. So, we're going to do this. <laughs> One second here, guys. It's gonna be a little bit lower quality, but at least will give us something to, something to look at. It's a little bit lower quality. But bear with us here. Oh! No, don't cut out now. Don't cut out now, we're... <laughs> no! <laughs> Come on! Come on! I bet all their servers got slammed just like what happens with US launches. Everyone starts streaming and all the data connections just go goodbye. Oh, we got confirmation of. No, no! Stop teasing us with this! Come on, let's switch to the other one. This is terrible. Come on. Oh! Hang on, hang on. We're going to rewind. Rewind. Okay, this is the sideways cam. But we do have confirmation of liftoff. Look like a nice clean liftoff. Look at that. Long March 5. <laughs> pointy end up, flamey end, not up. This is pointy end sideways, flamey end sideways. I am confused. As a rocket orientation specialist, I have no idea what to do right now. I am utterly baffled. Look at that. That is a cool shot. For some reason, I have an affinity to how the... I like that the engines are slightly angled out. There's probably some minimal cosine losses by having them angled out ever so slightly, but. <laughs> that is awesome. So the only the only engines you really see running are those outer engines that have RP1. And so, oh, oh, <laughs> let's, I might have to mute that other stream. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get. Who knows? We're just in it for the ride. So the only engines and the only... F oh, there we go. There's some launch audio. Ah. 
That is awesome. Okay, let's see if we can get something from this one. Now, there we go. There we go. Okay. We're in it, baby. So, this, yeah, so the center core is that is that um, is Hydrolock. So you're not going to see the center core running. You will see those side boosters running because they're running RP1. And RP1, when it runs, when it burns, what you're actually seeing is the carbon inside of the RP1 basically still burning and, and burning bright. So when it, especially when it reaches the, the oxygen in the atmosphere, it continues to burn because it, of the after burning effect. Such a tease, we have, we're having like video loops and stuff. I just wanna, I just wanna know what's happening. But anyway, so stage separation, uh, so once once even a, an RP-1 rocket is up high in the atmosphere, you'll notice the flame starts to get less and less orange. Yeah, we're just seeing a loop right now. Yeah, we're seeing a loop. Okay, that might be all we get for this? Let me... Cool. Okay, we'll we'll stay tuned here, guys. Looking for more information. Um, send me tweets, uh, Andrew, if you can, when you learn more about the progress and and uh, everything. I'm gonna mute this for now, though, so we're not hearing it, or at least so I'm not hearing it. So uh, it looks like it was a successful launch. I mean, everything <laughs> from what I saw. Here's here's a shot of the pad afterwards. Um, that looks about right. <laughs> it's cool to see a shot of the pad afterwards. You don't always get to see that. Uh, this, this looks good. It looks like it's, it's on its way. So as I was saying, I was kind of talking a little bit about how when an RP-1 rocket gets high up in the atmosphere, this is something that I wish I had learned before I made the pollution video. I learned this afterwards in the comment section, which is again, why the comment section is awesome because you guys teach me stuff too. But, um, so the RP-1, uh, at sea level, you're seeing it hit, you know, a lot of the, um, carbon in the RP-1 and in, in the, in the fuel itself. Uh, as it reaches the atmosphere and, and interacts with the oxygen, it has this afterburning effect, so it's still glowing red hot, still burning bright. As it gets higher and as the ambient oxygen decreases, it ends up not being on fire when it leaves, after it leaves the engine. And uh, it ends up just being this uh, more clear exhaust. That's why you'll see rocket plumes, especially like the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as they get closer to Miko and as they get into the upper atmosphere, still the same fuel, but you'll notice it's not burning bright anymore. It's because there's no more oxygen interacting with the exhaust plume and creating that bright glare. So yeah, super, super, super cool. Okay, so um, we have a, I'll get through the rest of you guys' questions and I'm probably gonna go to bed and wait to see if we have any more updates because we still have quite a few questions here. So Ray Huber, thank you for the membership. Renau, you're awesome. Thank you, Renau. I really appreciate that. That really means a lot. Everyone say thank you to Renau. You're awesome. Renau, you're always around and I just really appreciate that. Uh, Kai Chen, thank you for educating us. Uh, very grateful you stay focused on flight itself. Thank you, Kai. Uh, again, th th it shouldn't be that comp. It shouldn't be that complicated to me. Like this should just be. Uh, this should just be the way we are. And for some reason, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's in the water lately, but we just all seem to have gotten distracted and forget that there's other humans uh, doing cool things, and that it's okay to be excited about that, and that not everything has to be us versus them, and spaceflight doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, I, thank you again, uh, Ad, uh, Ad, Ad Vaith, for saying 100,000 or 700,000 subs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes. So, I again, uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to stream the Soyuz launch most likely unless it, unless it scrubs a little bit. But, yeah. Luke, uh, it's late for the Midwest. Get a cappuccino on me. Thank you. Uh, I, I'll i take you up on that tomorrow. Tomorrow's a good day to get a cappuccino before recording our Ludicrous Future podcast. I really appreciate that. Uh, Renau, I uh, meant to say that I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. At the end of the day, no matter who launches, we should all be excited. Space is hard, but exciting. And I will also say and exciting. Space is hard, but and or exciting. <laughs> Eric, I... Uh, thank you so much, Eric. First off, uh, no care what country is sending it. We're humanity on our way to Mars again. Many good vibes to the engineers and rocket surgeons over in China. Go, baby, go. Thank you, Eric. That's that's what I like to hear. Just, I, I, you know, again, the people that are turning the wrenches and, and sitting there, they're not necessarily, 
you know, you have to empathize and sympathize that people aren't always in control of where they're from and what society they live in. They're just trying to do their best sometimes, you know, um, and their perspective on the world is completely different than ours, maybe. And you, we should just be excited that people are learning how to further our exploration. That's what that's what that, that's what we're here for, period. And I just appreciate that you guys are are joining me in that celebration. That is what we're here for. So um <laughs> yes wayne jack first off thank you but uh cnsa the the chinese uh, national space agency might be part of military but tell me what does the military get from a mars mission space is hard go team space yes boom love it thank you uh rocket man good morning from the east coast uh isn't isn't this technically the heaviest payload to Mars since Phobos Grunt's true payload was only about 2,300? Yes, that's what, I'm pretty sure this is the heaviest payload ever sent to Mars at, at about five tons. That's impressive. And they're also trying the trifecta. They're trying to do an orbiter, uh, a separate lander deck, and a, well, I mean, technically it's kind of like a, an orbiter and a rover in one mission, but it's, it's kind of a rover, a lander, and a rover. Very impressive. I guess most rovers, except for Curiosity and... Perseverance have a separate landing or are, have a lander and a rover because you land the rover using the lander. So, uh, yeah, sorry for, to be pedantic. All right. Um, yeah, sorry. We covered this already, Mark. Hopefully you heard that there. Those are basically just like lightning rods or to prevent. Um, let's see here. Uh, they're just to prevent lightning from striking the rocket while it's on the pad. Good question. And thank you for his powers. Uh, introduced my girlfriend to your streams this week and now she's hooked. Thanks. Forrest, way to spread the love. I really appreciate, uh, having maybe forcefully at first making other people watch the stream, but you know, this is something that I think all humans, anyone, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever your background, whatever your nationality, whatever, anything, whatever your, your sexuality, it shouldn't matter. Uh, why? Like this is all something everyone from every background, every walk of life can all celebrate together. And again, every one of these is like us all cheering for a sport that we all love. You know, this is the World Series or this is the World Cup or this is the Olympics. Every time a rocket launches and we all just get to be excited together. Like, why wouldn't you love that? What is there to not love about that? <laughs> like, how could, yeah. So thank you for introducing your girlfriend, Forrest. Hello to Forrest and your girlfriend. Thanks for tuning in. There'll be a lot more, um, streams and a lot more content coming epic space models how's it going epic space models thank you for saying hi how do you say pointy end up flaming down in chinese we actually had someone translate it in our discord uh, i didn't even want to give it a, a, a even a tenth of a shot but <laughs> yeah oh whoops um i should let's see here i should take a second real quick because someone else was asking about uh pointy end up flaming and down uh, if you guys are interested in the shirt that I am wearing, that is part of our web store. You can go to shop.everydayastronaut.com or everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Doesn't matter. Same thing. And you can get your own pointy end up, flamey end down shirt. Again, we are working on new onesies and things like that. Uh, but yeah, we, we have some new merchandise coming out, I, I think by Friday. So stay tuned. Uh, Discord, you guys, Discord and... Um, I still got audio coming from somewhere else. I've got it muted in the desktop. Hopefully it's not happening anymore. Uh, but yeah, we will have new merchandise coming out Friday. Uh, so stay tuned. New keychains are coming and full flow stage combustion cycle hoodies that are way better than the old ones. I'm so excited about these. We did tons of upgrades. I should show you guys pictures. Oh man. I don't know how I can do that safely without like, without giving something away. Um, I'll give you guys a little teaser. That's what I'll do. I'll give you guys a teaser. Let's see. This is this is the teaser you guys are getting. One second. Um, they're totally different. Hang on, hang on. Got to find a good place to do this with you guys. All right. No, what? What are you doing? Huh? Full full screen. Make this full screen. There we go. Okay, these are the uh, little teaser of the new the new hoodies the new hoodies. 
Uh, they're different on the sleeve. There's a, a readout with like the pressure and all that stuff. Um, the back has the diagram that you guys are used to. There's even a different sew-in that's awesome. Like it's a totally different sew-in patch on the inside. These are unbelievably like the coolest hoodies uh, we've ever had by far. So we'll be launching those this week. Discord and Patreon, you guys will be uh, getting early access to that. So uh, I can't wait. I love that stuff. So yeah, again, if you guys want to support what I do, everydayastronaut.com slash shop. It really helps me continue to do what I do and just help hire more people to make more cool stuff and and expand the space and make it better. So thank you guys for hanging out. You guys are awesome. Okay, so let's um, let's get back to answering guys' questions. Fallen Gaming. Uh, hey, Tim, I just wanted to say thank you for being you and helping me through some really tough times at the moment. Always love your work. Keep it up. Fallen Gaming, I'm glad to hear that we have something to cheer for and look forward to and be positive about. Um, better times are ahead, I promise. You know, I think we've all had... This year's been particularly hard. Uh, <laughs> So just hang in there. I, I think there's hopefully, you know, some light around the at the end of the tunnel at some point. Uh, as long as we all learn how to not scream at each other over absolutely everything and and find some common ground and open up dialogues instead of debates and just just be like bros. <laughs> I don't know. Just be people. Like just be people. Uh, yeah. And I find a lot of hope in that. I find a lot of hope in the idea that that we can start coming together relatively soon. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're, that you're getting through some tough times. Uh, we're here space family out here, you know, we're all just here to hang out and have fun. So <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that falling gaming and, and, and here's to better times. Uh, Corey black says a little late. Good day from South Australia. Love your work. It's not a rocket, but it's an Oz, oh, an Aussie icon, but farewell to, f to flight a uh, Q F seven, four, seven, four V H O E J. So, uh, and was that a, was that a type of airplane that was kind of cool? I kind of want to look that up now because I'm not familiar with that particular vehicle. The final Qantas. Oh yeah. That's the last 747. Yes. I heard about this. I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That is insane. The last 747, it's the last 747 to fly passengers, right? Cause now it's just getting retired to only be cargo. That's crazy. People are gonna look back at that and be like, "Oh man, you know, I remember back in, you know, I I, I was lucky enough to at one point have flown on 747, uh, but last proper jumbo jet to fly. That's crazy. Yes. Uh, thanks for the reminder, Corey Black. Um, yeah, that is insane. Uh, from a con, we have Tim Dodd is a hero. You truly make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I I don't know what all I have to do with this. Again, my job here is to is just to celebrate and cheer for those people doing awesome things. You know, I wouldn't have this job if it wasn't for the aerospace industry and people out there making the what's physically possible but considered impossible possible. You know, they're out there doing the real work. So this is all just to help the general public get excited about the work of those people because there's just little details that are like someone's career, some little tiny thing that seems that could easily be lost to the average person. Like, oh, you work on a helium sleeve valve that's a purge valve inside the uh, second uh, or the third boost pump and a hydrogen pump for a closed cycle fuel rich uh, Hydrolox engine. What? <laughs> you know, like, but the idea is like, we can actually study that stuff. We can actually learn that stuff by just kind of going step at a time and by creating videos that get to those points. By the end of the video, it might be a 45 minute long video and it might be about a different topic, but because we're kind of weaving that narrative and, and adding these little sprinkles of detail, that's what's important to me. People complain all the time that my videos are too long and it took you 30 minutes to get to the point of how rockets roll. I learned a ton learning why rockets roll. There's not just an answer. You can't just be like, they roll so that it orients. I mean, at the end of the video, I do literally just, they roll to, you know, orient their azimuth to the blah, 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 blah. But there's so many terms that you have to define and fun stories along the way too. That's the whole point is like the, the journey's half the, half the video, half the excitement of the video. You're not watching my videos to get to the point. You could Google anything that I'm telling you pretty much. If you want to know, Something, something, something. You can find a two paragraph article on Wikipedia, sure. <laughs> Fun, <laughs> that's on you for not doing that. Uh, if, if you think my videos are too long, too bad. I love those stories. I love those, like all the things that I get to learn personally along the way and share that knowledge with you guys. Cause I think those are fun little, little minutiae, just fun little like, little tangents. I, 
I love them. You guys, you guys come here for my videos for Tangent Town, or you get out because tangents are staying. <laughs> oh man! All right, so, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of reflection on the picture. I don't know what you expect me to do about that, but um, back right, you're that there's. There's not really reflections on those pictures. I don't know what you're talking about. That's not a reflection. That's just the picture, isn't it? I don't know. Not that it really matters. They're just there to look pretty. <laughs> All right, Zachary. Recently commented on you inspiring me in becoming a valedictorian. Yes, 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 yes. What's the best way for me to send you my speech? I talk about SpaceX. My Insta is Z uh, Kolovos. Uh, he was... He was pointing to the pointy end being up. Um, awesome. I will take a look for that, Zachary. Um, other than that, you can find my email. Uh, just go ahead and hit me up. I, I reluctantly will say it online. Please don't send me unsolicited feedback on things because I get too many. Like I, I, if people also want to know why it takes me so long to answer a video, because I have... Like I wake up every morning to like 30 emails from people telling me to tell Elon Musk something and I like just doing, I need an assistant is what I need. But between all the messages, like my first two hours are just sitting there trying to catch up on like emails and stuff. So please don't send me unsolicited emails. Zachary, I'm giving you permission. Please info at everydayastronaut.com. It'll get to me. Okay. And I would love to see your speech. So um, congrats again on being valedictorian. That is awesome. Um, oh, awesome. Sloppy. Hey. <laughs> Alex, how's it going? Uh, yo, I'll I'll buy all the baby stuff. Thanks for everything you do, Tim. Thanks, mods, and thanks, community. Team Space, sloppy. I love it. How's it going, Alex? Good to see you in here again. Hope everything is well with the family. Connor, um, if you could change anything about Starship, what would you change? An opinion on New Glenn or other Blue Origin projects? Connor, great question. I think the one thing I would change about uh, Starship is if we're really seriously going to consider it near term to be safe for human flight i'm sorry it needs an abort system for the next until it's flown until the same rocket has successfully flown like a hundred times and we prove that like this is a safe and reliable system because these are some extremes we're dealing with in space flight space flight extreme pressures extreme temperatures extreme heat extreme everything is just extreme about it and until it's so routine and and safe Unlike the space shuttle, you know, I think we, I have that video all about why does, does, should Starship have an abort system? And I think, mark my words, just like the Starship moon lander for the human lander systems that is part of the Artemis program now, it will be a while before someone steps onto a Starship and flies. Even things like Dear Moon, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up in the long run that the only way to really make it safe, at least for, again, for the next like near term future, for the next 10 years maybe, is to get a starship in orbit, fuel it up in orbit, do all the things it needs to do, the dangerous stuff like cryogenic fuel transfers in space, and then rendezvous with like a dragon capsule and then get the crew from the dragon into starship. Of course, dragon capsule at best can get like seven people and <laughs> it'll take a lot of dragon capsules to fill a starship, but you know, two dragon capsules to get a deer moon or something, you know, I mean, that those flights might be more expensive than the whole starship thing. But you're talking about human lives on the line. And I think that's something that uh, would be worth it. At least, again, fairly near term until it gets proven out and proven in flight. But um, Blue Origin, love it. New Glenn, mark my words. All those that you keep saying like, yeah, let me know when you guys get to orbit. If if you're saying that, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're like at the peak of the Dunning-Kruger effect. You don't know enough about Blue Origin to make that comment valid, okay? Because trust me, I've been in their headquarters I've been in their facilities. I've seen their launch pad be built. It it's not like orbit some like thing that they're starting novel and they have no idea how to do it. They hired people from other rocket companies that have been on orbital programs. Like these are this is a solved issue. They're building a massive rocket that will, that's huge. That's almost, you know, getting up there like over almost 50 tons of, of payload capacity. It's I think it's like 45 tons. Massive rocket. Like, it'll compete with Falcon Heavy, and that's their first orbital rocket. Uh, it's a big beast, and it's being worked on, and it's going to fly in the next, I'd say, two years. And so people are like, it's so embarrassing that it's going to take them that long. Like, 
that's the timeline they are carved out for themselves. Like it's, it's so embarrassing. It took humans thousands and thousands of years to ex- of existence to reach space. Like, what's the point? What the timeline's like totally trivial at this point. They're going to orbit, and New Glenn's going to be huge, and it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be a crowd favorite. Mark my words. New Glenn launches down at Cape Canaveral at Kennedy Space Center are going to be the ones to see. That is going to be, that's what you're going to want to see when you go to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Just, yeah, seriously, mark my words, because if you're at like Jetty Park um, or a little bit further down on the beach, you're only three miles, five kilometers away from that launch pad. And that launch, again, that rocket's like huge. It's almost Saturn V sized. This would be the closest the general public will ever get to a rocket launch. And not only is it just like a rocket launch, it's a big rocket launch. They might even have to move the crowd back a little bit. There's a chance they might not let you be within like four miles or something for exclusion zones. It's going to be awesome. So seeing it and just all you have to do is walk out along Cocoa Beach right now and look up the, the shore, look north, see the launch pad, see the launch complex. It is seriously, seriously impressive. Um, yeah. Um, that's what I think. That was a long one. <laughs> Sorry. But again, I'm just cheering for the people that uh, uh, they're doing stuff. They're doing a lot of stuff. People just don't get to see all the hard work being done right now. And I have. So I have a fine appreciation for it. And I will be telling you guys all about it more again in the future. Uh, thanks, Sandy. Money for Tim to go to the ISS. Any shop dis- discount for launch days? I didn't set one up since this stream was very last minute. Um, but stay tuned. Again, we'll, we'll have the shop open uh, I'll do a launch day discount and we, Patreon, you guys will be getting your discount and early access to those new hoodies as well. Uh, we only did, a, we didn't do a huge run on them yet just because lots of constraints on everything right now in life. There's just supply chain constraints and stuff. So we didn't do a huge run. So patrons, you guys will get your, your dibs on it first. So, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I'll also have a launch day next time we do a launch day discount next time we do a uh, like Star Hopper and any other launch thing. Thank you for the reminder. Um, Bobby, we've I mentioned it a few times. It's it's literally in the works right now. Uh, we are almost done with it. This is a little, you can get a little preview. This is the video. Uh, it is Perseverance versus Curiosity, kind of the difference between the two rovers, even though they look very similar. We have a special guest. Bobak Ferdosi, if you guys are familiar with Bobak, he is a JPL superstar, helped build Curiosity, and he talks about uh, what he's excited for with um, Star Sh- with 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 not Star- Curiosity versus Perseverance. But yeah, I'm really excited for this one. We do a timeline too, running you guys through the whole re-entry, the EDL, the entry, descent, landing. It's going to be awesome. I think you guys will really enjoy this video. So um, it'll be coming out this week. We're almost done. We're, we're pretty much done with the rough cut or getting close to being done with the rough cut. The rough cut will be up on, on discord and Patreon tomorrow for you guys to check out and then hopefully publish on Friday, if not Saturday. So stay tuned. I know it's been a long time and I am ready. I am very, very ready. Thank you so much. Uh, Monty, uh, Gallegos. Thank you very much. Monty Gallegos. I hope I pronounced that even remotely close to right. Uh, and also thank you to Valik, Valikite. I appreciate it. Again, pronouncing is terrible. And here's another one from Make. Are you guys just doing this? So I have to try to pronounce the difficult names. Make Mara. Oh, it's gone. Um, I hope the, the launch goes well. Thank you. It did. It did. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that Make. I'm sorry if I am terrible at these names. RH67 Camaro, we need to support the advancements of technology and knowledge of mankind along with common goals rather than having to suffer alone. Amen. Thank you. This is very true. Um, Let's see. Okay, why don't we talk about this here real quick. Is it bad that China, this is from Arvid Christian, is it bad that China is using no solid because the SRBs are the ones which give you more thrust uh, compared to liquid, even though it is less eco-friendly. Well, it's all an engineering trade-off. There is a potential for a high thrust to weight ratio with solid rocket boosters, but there's drawbacks. There's there's pros that solid rocket boosters can be cheaper because they're basically just a metal casing with a bunch of rubber <laughs> propellant inside of it um, and, and a pyro fuse to light it, basically. I mean, I'm very oversimplifying it, but they can be cheaper. They can be a cheap way to get thrust. Um, so it's not necessarily bad. It's just a trade-off. And uh, all... Life is a compromise. 
period. Space flight is, is specifically always a compromise. I used to have this thing in photography. In photography, I used to say that photography is a compromise because no matter what, there's always a trade-off. And even when it comes down to like your holy trinity, your exposure, your aperture, your ISO, adjust any one of those things. Not only does it change your exposure, but it also adjusts like, you know, your aperture will adjust your depth of field, your shutter speed, how blurry or sharper, you know, tech, uh, Act, changing your action basically. ISO, how much grain or not grain there is, but they all make the picture brighter or darker. They all have a compromise in them. Um, and in the same way, price, like you have this price, like is a $100 camera going to cut it when instead of a $10,000 camera? Like there's always a compromise and portability and things like that too. Rockets are an extreme case of this because there's always a compromise and it's just all these engineering trade-offs. And that's what I love about seeing different rockets fly is that different rockets, you know, you'll see different design engineering and engineering uh, ideas behind them. And it's just super cool to know that, you know, we can get to space using all these different ideas and to see people's choices. Like again, um, you know, the Vulcan rocket has a methane, liquid methane core stage. We're, we're coming in the era of having um, liquid methane and it's going to be awesome. Liquid methane is going to be on the New Glenn uh, for the booster, for the booster, it's going to be bulk Vulcan booster, and it's also going to be on Starship uh, upper stage and booster stage. So it's going to be the era of methane, and all of a sudden we're seeing this. But you know they're all doing it in very different ways. Uh, you know the Vulcan rocket will have solid rocket boosters to help it get off the pad and help uh, gain additional delta V and thrust. Uh, New Glenn is is just using methane. Starships just using methane altogether. You know, New Glenn will have a, a Hydrolox upper stage. So it's all these trade offs, and it's not necessarily bad that they're not using solids. It's just different. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I, I want to make sure I might be. Nope, we're good. Um, no way. From Jeff John, my science teacher lets us earn extra by writing short reports of your videos. I'm not kidding. That might be one of the coolest things I've ever heard and like the biggest compliment. I'm like, I'm probably blushing right now. That's awesome. Uh, your teacher's awesome. Jeff John, to, if you were one of Jeff John's students, wait, Jeff John's classmates and Jeff John's teacher, first off, you're awesome. Thank you for like including your class in, in along with my learning process. That's amazing. Uh, but also, yeah, that's, that's cool. I loved, I had a teacher... I talked about this on my stream the other day, but I had a teacher that would just let me do so many things on my own, and those had big life-changing differences for me. You know, um, she let me, I had a teacher that let me just draw. Whenever she was talking, this is in second grade, whenever she was talking, she would hand me a drawing pad and, and let me draw because she understood that while I'm drawing, I'm still listening, and I'm just, and I'm just keeping busy, and she fostered that, and she allowed me to learn in my own way, and that was amazing. Like, that was game changing and life changing for me. It helped normalize the idea that just because I'm learning in a different way and I learn very visually, um, you know, that, that that's the way that I learned. And it's so cool that there's a teacher out there allowing and and, and treating YouTube as, as a platform to for potential education. Of course, YouTube can be a platform for misinformation and, and garbage, but thank you for, uh, yeah, that's like, geez, man. Hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, um, are they sending an orbiter and a rover, or only orbiter? Both. They're, this is the this is the most ambitious Mars mission, really. There's a full blown orbiter, um, and there's supposed and they're trying to land that has a rover on it too. So it's like the trifecta. It's it's absolutely amazing. So this is a this is a big mission. So um, again, if you guys need a rundown on what this mission is, you can go to my website, everydayastronaut.com. Oh, I don't have this in the. I forgot to put this um, in the description. I'm going to do that right now. You guys are going to hear me type, and I'm going to type it out loud. Need a rundown of this launch and mission. Check out our pre-launch. I'm going to capitalize P because I'm cool like that. Pre-launch previews, and then here's a link. That is now officially in the description of the video. Um, if you guys need to learn more about this, because I did talk about it at the beginning, or rewatch this video a little bit, and I'll tell you guys all about the actual mission coming up. And again, Austin wrote this article for us. Awesome job, Austin, especially it was a last minute thing. We decided to do this very last minute. And yeah, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, and check that out, Payush. Let's see here, this is from Wade the Wallaby 2. Thank you very much. I really like that name. That is awesome, Wade the Wallaby. Um, Andrew Handler, 
Hey Tim, I am 13 and I learned so much from all your videos. I think you should start a GoFundMe so we can raise money to get you a zero G plane. Andrew, that is awesome. I love that idea. I actually have had offers to do a zero G flight that uh, has not come to fruition yet. I will definitely take them up on that. I think what I would rather do, I think I'm getting close. Well, we do have a Patreon tier. Oh, I shouldn't even talk about this, but that like if we get to a certain tier, you know, there, I promised to buy a ticket to space. And at the time when I wrote it, I thought it was a huge joke. And we're like a third of the way there now. And I'm like genuinely terrified. I would probably ride, I would ride a suborbital flight, I think. But like, I am actually scared to go to space. Um, so it's kind of already in the works with crowdfunding. Oh man. Hey, Stormbear, don't worry. L let me know what your super chat is. Um, and I'll read it in here. Yeah, I'm just over a third of the way there. Oh man. <laughs> this is from Ozzy G. Hey, Tim Brownsville native here. My brother and I love your content. Keep it up. As an engineer student, your content is a breath of fresh air. Well, thank you, Ozzy G. Tune in. Brownsville, that's awesome. You're going to see some exciting things happen in your area if you haven't already. Uh, that is awesome. So uh, stay tuned. There's a lot more. And thanks for saying hi. Um, let's see here. I'm from Stormbear. Mm, hang on. Stormbear, what was your super chat? Stormbird, let me know, my friend. Oh, yeah, but Stephen Marr, Space Ghost Steve, my friend Space Ghost Steve, has a great picture of LC36. We were talking about this a second ago. I hope that... Oh. What are you talking about, Twitter? Um, this is from Space Coast Steve. You guys can follow him on Twitter. Has a cool picture. This is from... This is really far away, even. This is not the closest you can get to the launch pad. This is like six or probably six miles, seven miles. So about 10 kilometers away from the launch pad. Look how close and, and upfront and personal that launch pad is going to be. This is for Blue Origins New Glen. So you can go up the coast all the way like to the left here, you know, way down there, another three miles north and get even closer. This is an awesome shot because it really gives you that, that perspective of the, the parallax a little bit of, you know, tight compression on a long telephoto lens that brings the foreground up so we really get the sense of like how because this is kind of what it feels like when you're out on the beach you're just like look how close that launch i mean this is an extreme this is really really compressing the the depth there but it is i mean as far as the launch you're going to want to see it's going to be new glenn launches so yeah awesome thanks for that shot that is that is great um oh cool the, there's an official Official stream happening 30 minutes later. We will, but maybe we don't want to tune into that because maybe that'll be the one that gives us a copyright strike. That's, we'll see. Uh, we, we, we did enough. <laughs> we did enough damage. Uh, this is from uh, Zia Zhang. Uh, let's see. It says, uh, good job, bro. We use this phrase commonly for internet live hosts. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That is awesome. I'm glad that you tuned in. Let's see here. Uh, this is from David. Congrats on the 700,000 Tim New Zealand fan and subscriber. Congrats. Congratulations. Streaming a successful launch for China via your fans. Thank you, David. Thanks for tuning in. 700,000. I have to let that sink in. That's insane. Uh, Sephirix. Can we get some uh, cappuccinos for the amazing mods? That's a good That's a good call. We should be doing some caps for everyone that's staying up late or getting up early for these. So thanks again to the awesome mods. You guys are helping keep our community sane and uh you know again hashtag team space the things that matter um <laughs> this comes from moo a coffee cup with the words tired <laughs> that's gonna be me tomorrow john ellis i really this is great i really appreciate it john thanks to my support space education yes amen thank you um this is from chad how's it going hey tim i think it's bedtime it is we're gonna wrap up here um, I'm going to be signing out here in just a minute. We just have a few more to catch up on, and then it's bedtime for Bonzo. All right, uh, this is from Boro B. I am harvesting blackberries and listening to you. Thank you for helping me. Hello from si from Serbia. That is awesome. Hello Serbia, Boro. I appreciate. Good luck with your with your uh, blackberries. I like blackberries. Wish I could have them. Maybe I'll go to Serbia someday and eat some delicious blackberries or put them in a delicious drink of some kind. Uh, 
This is also from Utopia. Thanks, Tim and Mods. Congrats for China for a fantastic, fantastic launch. Trolls mean the stream is is doing good. That's true. Great job, Mods, for keeping them at bay. Yes, again, thank you to the Mods and thank you to Utopia Labs. I really appreciate that. And from Eric, and we're gonna we're gonna close out. Uh, we have two more, I guess. Uh, thank you for the coverage. Best wishes to Tian Wen Mission. Yes, because we still have. Don't forget. We still have a couple, seven months or whatever before the real trouble starts, or not trouble, but the real uh, the real mission and when it gets crazy because the entry, descent, and landing and all that stuff is going to be uh, crazy. So, um, yeah, we will see. Um, do we bother pulling up, though? I don't know if we want to do that, Andrew. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap out here, so... Uh, Roy Young, thanks for your space education. You're welcome. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Sorry that I can't get you up on the screen. And uh, Russell Hoffman, out doing some uh, astrophotography while watching you. ISS Big Dipper and Neowise. Yes, everyone, if you have a clear sky, go out just after sunset. Look northwest after sunset or before sunrise. It'll be in the northeast. It, you know, kind of dips below the horizon for a little bit. Uh, Neowise Comet, you can only see it for about the next week or so. Go out, find a dark sky and a clear night. Go out there and see a comet. It's actually pretty hard to see with the naked eye. I had to use a phone app. Maybe I need to get somewhere darker and have a little bit clearer night. I didn't have the best clarity. Uh, you kind of have to have the right the right night and all that stuff to, to really be able to see it well. Because it is getting, it seems like getting kind of dim. So, yeah. Um, you're So, that is awesome. Um, thanks for keeping me awake. Going to try for some Milky Way later. That is awesome. Good luck with that, Russell. Um, that's great. And Frostney, there, there is delayed live footage now on Weibo. Again, I, just to try to wrap out here, uh, there's probably a lot better. Look for it if you guys want to see the replay. Let's just watch that. But I'm going to sign out for tonight, guys, because there's a lot more work to do. There's a lot more to be talking about. There's a lot more stuff to do. And I'll be doing a, way too many live streams right now. Like, I am going to be doing way too many streams in the next, like, week or two. And I... Don't want to just get burnt out on that. So they are exhausting, but I really, really, really appreciate you guys joining and hanging out. So uh, again, if you want to hang out more and join our Discord channel during these launches or gain access again, like early merch, like we're getting uh, tomorrow, hopefully, and early access to the videos and want to help add your comments or thoughts, opinions, facts, check for us, be uh, consider becoming a Patreon member by going to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Uh, I would not be doing this stuff if it wasn't for my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are incredible, and I love our Discord community. You guys are awesome. I have so much fun with you guys, and um, yeah. I missed... Okay, so I miss, miss Leo the Human. Leo the Human and um, Stormbear. I missed two. They might not have... Hang on. Do, 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 do. I don't... I don't see some of them. Oh, John Whitaker says... Is Elon Musk as cool as he seems when you interviewed him? I'm jealous you had the opportunity to interview him. Elon Musk is great. He's just like, I, with my interviews too, I try to show you like him, the, the before and after, as much as I can, as much as we're allowed to. Um, especially the first interview, you saw what officially he's like off camera because he thought he was off camera for the last like three minutes. That's the real Elon. And from one of, and even the, the off camera time with this last interview, that is him. He is excited he is driven and and really really amped up about space flight and um let's see you know it's it's just really cool to see someone that is actually that really does care and really has that knowledge about space flight um enough to just pursue it fully so i i definitely admire him i i think he's doing awesome work so um nasa ksp i'm sorry i missed this too uh i am oh man i'm sorry I, there was a lot that I missed here in the in the actual viewer activity. Um, uh, NASA KSP, nice to see the launch. What are your thoughts on this on the NASA Mars helicopter? You'll hear it in the upcoming video. I really appreciate your super chat. Um, you'll be hearing about my thoughts on the NASA helicopter. I think it's awesome. Spoiler. Zhao <laughs> uh, uh, Zhang, thank you for the membership. KJ, uh, any possibility to see the second stage over Montana? Mm. No, it's a southeastern trajectory. I don't think you'd see the second stage over the United States. Uh, Dan Horrigan, why does Max 2 seem to happen right before or after going supersonic? I assume it has to do with being transonic, but always been curious. It's it's more just kind of a, a coincidence in a sense, because like the other day, the Minotaur 4 launch 
when it launched, it goes supersonic in like 17 seconds. And Max Q isn't for another few seconds because it's punching through the atmosphere so fast. It's just screaming. Um, other rockets, you know, if they went really slowly, Max Q could actually happen. Um, I don't know. It just, it, it tends to line up that way. It's just, I think a bit of a coincidence. Um, but yeah, good question. I should probably confirm that. Um, Wayne Jack, we have confirmation first stage separation waiting for second stage. Um, man, I, I'm sorry. I miss a lot of these. Stephanie Cowell, uh, Cowell, you recently said space is your therapy. I couldn't agree more. Your channel has definitely been a big piece of that for me. Cheaper than therapy. Thank you, Stephanie. That's awesome. Um, from Luke Prail, Simul, uh, Simul Astra uh, Sonium Fitsimius. Love your work, Tim. Thank you. I don't know what that means, but thank you. Uh, Peter Chen, that's awesome. Go Mars. Thank you. Ozzy G. Hey, Tim. Okay, got that. Um, oh, no, yeah. Mm. From Ozzy G. I think I said that one. I don't remember. Uh, uh, Jaden says, get the political hate off the chat. Yeah, we we tried a lot for the beginning. Um, <laughs> Leo the Human, we need a t-shirt with a comic where Tim kicks out haters from Tim's new studio with hashtag Team Space. The Tim's Space, yes. Tim Space slash Team Space. Crazy Uncle Bob, you were wrong. Happy to announce that you were wrong. <laughs> but I appreciate the tip. Uh, Wade the Wallaby, I thank you so much, Wade. Um, will I be at launch for Artemis 1, and what are you most excited for with it? I will definitely, assuming things, this is from Velocity Airspace, um, assuming, assuming everything's safe to travel for Artemis 1, uh, which I really hope by next year it is. Holy cow. Um, I will definitely be there. And what I'm most excited for is hearing those massive solid rocket boosters. This will be like a space shuttle on steroids. And the space shuttle was supposed to be one of the, the most impressive things to, to see launch. Um, so that's, I just want to hear it and feel it. I think those massive solid rocket boosters really shake a lot of things and being three miles or five kilometers away from it will be unbelievable. So that's that's my answer to that velocity airspace. Thank you. Chris, Han Chris Harris again. How freaking close are those houses? Two kilometers? They looked pretty close. I don't I don't know. They looked really close. Uh, thanks again. Connor Jones just moved to Melbourne. When's the next meetup? When it's safe to do so. When uh, At this point, I I wouldn't bet on the next year uh, or next. I mean, the, the end until the end of this year, it just seems like I won't be traveling. Most likely I'm probably going to be staying home covering launches from here. Um, it just does not seem like travel is a wise thing and public meetups and stuff like that. Definitely not a wise thing either. So we'll have to wait until it's safe to do so. Maybe the United States, we can get our butts back on track, do something like what New Zealand did where we just totally shut down. <laughs> unfortunately, I know it's not what people want, but half, you know, half doing it isn't doing it. Half doing it's doing it wrong. So uh, I think we have to be really vigilant, all of us, community. We all have to just like come together on this, kick this thing's butt, get it out of here because it is, it shouldn't be us against each other. It should be us against this virus and against this pandemic. And we're still shooting ourselves in the foot every day. We aren't complying with each other. Um, all it's doing is making everything worse. If we're not Kicking out the virus, we are shutting the economy down by not having things be able to be open. So, yeah, um, when it's safe to do so, Connor. Timothy Reed, hey, Tim. Uh, hey, Tim, it's Tim. <laughs> Keep up the good work and, th and staying up late with us. Thank you so much. Um, oh, man, guys, I just found a million. Okay, here. Strato Boy, good work, everyday astronaut. Thanks for keeping us, uh, keeping it all about rockets. Cheers. Thank you, Strato Boy. Roberto Edwins, I just want to know the possibility for humans, humanity to go to Mars exists. I think that is a possibility. I think in my lifetime, it's, I mean, it's physically possible. So therefore, it's not impossible. It's physically possible with current technology. It's not impossible. We just need the will and the money and the resources to, to make it happen. And it can absolutely happen. So yeah. Uh, good question, Roberto, and I will be having more and more videos that cover that type of stuff all the time. That's, you know, definitely. Uh, when Thari, hi, Tim, I know Max, he was dangerous, but has a rocket ever failed before there, bef failed there that you know of? Also, which is harder for fairing catch, boat or fairing steering? So as far as Max Q, yeah, it's always a call out, but I don't know of any recent, at least, um, any recent failures at Max Q, but it's always this like milestone that we still strive for. So 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's that, I, I don't know of any, like, I, maybe early on Max-Q is this thing they just they were having a really hard time with and they couldn't get through it, and now it's not a big deal. But, um, yeah, that's that's a great question. Also, uh, fairing catch, I really have no idea if it's the steering the, the parafoil or, like, the steering the boat. I, I think it's just the the getting those two to cooperate. It's not necessarily one or the other. It's just having them work in unison and talking to each other, so... Uh, Wade Jackson, how close will all these different rockets be to each other on their trips to Mars? A long ways apart. Um, the relative velocities are, are relatively matched, but you know it's it's not like you, you wouldn't be able to see the probes from each other unless you had like a really big telescope or something. It's not like you'd be like, oh hey, ah, you know, it's there are hundreds of no, they're thousands and thousands of kilometers away. We'll put it that way. I have no idea exactly, but I mean, they're they're coasting like days apart from each other, going at you know, trans like at, at escape velocity speed. So it, they're quite a ways apart. They, although they will land relatively close to each other in time, they still will never be like within um, vision, really. So okay, uh, one more from Aaron E. Sorry, guys. Sorry if I missed some of these. I had some stuff get out of order here between the two systems. Ernie, would you rather... There's a time uh, Elon thought one may fail. Reverse time five years and only one survives. Would you pick Tesla or SpaceX? Okay, so I see. Ernie is asking if I could like change time and if one of them... Uh, if they were both about to fail. Um, or if I had to choose which one would fail fail between Tesla and SpaceX. That's actually really, really hard for me because I think they both have genuinely, there's still a lot of hate on Tesla's uh, true, like, is it really that much better for the environment and stuff? But it's more than that. It, it's it's the push of new technology that I love about Tesla. It's not necessarily, sustainability is great. And I think we all need to honestly be focusing on that. I think that's a obvious scientific consensus that we can't keep doing what we're doing we have to make change but the cool thing is like it's a smart change it's a change that actually makes sense it's not like it's a you're not giving up anything by having a car that can getting closer and closer to full autonomy a car that has like netflix in it a car that can go zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds like you're you're not giving up like it's not a bad compromise you know and as a matter of fact it's, it's an increasing if you're looking at like the the curve of, of exponentials, uh, EVs are increasingly getting faster, better range, uh, better technology. You know, they're just becoming better cars in a hurry and having bigger advantages. Again, for 99% of your driving, I think a lot of people don't think about this when they're buying an EV, but unless you're driving more than 300 miles, 500 kilometers in a day, consistently, like every day, say you, you know, for most of us, think about your actual daily driving of a vehicle. You're going maybe 20 kilometers to work and back, maybe, maybe 50 kilometers to work and back. No big deal. You could have a tiny go-kart for a car. You know, it doesn't matter. You come home and you charge. You're full in the morning. You never, you're, you're charging. You're like gas station time, you know, like you would never have to do that anymore. You just go home and you plug it in and it's not a big deal. You literally, it's a two second thing. People think of it like, oh, road trips, you know, you have to charge for 45 minutes or an hour sometimes. It's like, do you, how often are you doing cross country road trips? Because I actually do cross country road trips a lot. I've gone down to Texas like four times, which is two full days of driving. Florida like three times in Tesla. Like it's not a big deal. It's for twelve hours of driving, it would take about eleven hours in a gas car, including you know by the time you factor in your stops and stuff. I'd much rather have a car that does all those other things for all my other times. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Tesla, sorry, the big rant. I don't know. I mean, I think SpaceX, uh, they both have huge implications long term. I can't pick one. Sorry, those are my rules. <laughs> uh, but that's it. And yeah, except for there were, of course, a few more while we're still talking. Renau again, thank you. Uh, Renau says, thank you for helping make my long overnight of work a little less long. Congrats to China. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I'm going to get it out, going to get it out of here again. Big congratulations to the teams at China uh, in China from the Chinese National Space Agency uh, for their successful launch of the Long March 5 and for the successful mission of uh, Tian. Oh, I'm going to mispronounce it now, aren't I? Uh, Tian Wen One. I'm sorry. Tian Wen One. Congratulations on so far uh, what looks like a very successful mission. Best of luck on the transfer. 
the Transmartian Injection, the Coast Phase, and then we'll be here cheering you guys on for the Entry, Descent, and Landing and all that stuff. So the Mars Arrival, all that stuff. I am so excited. Uh, this was a big mission. Again, this is the biggest mission to Mars. Why wouldn't we all be here cheering for it and be excited about it? I don't care who does it. It's the biggest, most ambitious mission to Mars to date. So that's awesome. Congrats so far on a, on a beautiful launch. So hashtag Team Space, everybody. Stay positive. Keep your head up. Uh, and I'm going to sign out here. So again, we'll see you guys very soon. Lots more live streams, lots more content coming out. So Oh, all right. We'll see you guys. I I really love you, Discord and everything. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Bye, everybody. Love you guys.